I say, Alfie. Hello. The last half of this order puzzles me. Who's it for? Mr. Foster in the Teakwood district. He's ordered buckets again. A neat dozen this time. For the five years I've been working here, Foster's ordered more buckets than all the other Teakwallers combined. Must be the heat and the loneliness. They get a little balmy up there in the interior. Mr. Foster, I believe. Hello, Ken. I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, a week. It's only a week. A well, week seem like years when you haven't anyone but Bonji with whom to talk your own language. They want to think you were 60 miles away instead of six. Sickness in my elephant herd. I lost two. I was lucky to get away at all. Uh, take more than that to keep me away from that yuletide trek to Char Cum. Hey, one must have a bit of England occasionally, you know. The very thought of straight-laced Char Cum drives me to scotch and soda. Well, join me. In the middle of the morning? Well, where's your holiday spirit, man? Peace on earth and scotch on the sideboard. You sure you won't have one? No, never touch it before sundown. Sort of family tradition. I thought Burma would throw that out of you long ago. I'm oh, sorry, Ken, if my ideas about life aren't exactly yours. Well, here's to my family. No traditions and plenty of whiskey. Cheerio. Well, after months of all this, I tell you that little village of Chow Cum has all the lure of London. Well, I hope enough of this will help me see it through your glasses. Say, doesn't Christmas mean anything at all to you? Think of it, contact with civilization again. Good dinner, well served. Human beings to talk to for a change. Chance to see a white woman. Exactly. But I've seen all the women in Charcom, unfortunately. There's only one worth looking at. Mrs. Uh, Trevor. Now look here, Ken, what are you driving at? I'm trying to find out if you're human. Why, certainly I'm human. All right, prove it. Let's forget Char Common and stuffy society. What do you say we treat ourselves to a rundown to Mandalay? What? Sure, jolly old Mandalay, where the old teak wallers play. Say, we've been marooned in this jungle for a year. Come on. No. Well, why not? Oh. Wouldn't she approve? Really, Foster, you've got a one-track mind, haven't you? You know, on some subjects. Loyalty happens to be one of them. Oh, don't worry, I'm not turning missionary. Listen, Ken, I came out here with one idea in mind. Everything I've done, everything I hope to do is for her. Well, why doesn't she come out? Out here? Well, why not? We've got ministers. Jungle's no place for a well-bred girl, says the well-bred man. And later, the tropics will have something to say. Oh, I don't know. Trevor's bound to retire. When he does, I'm next in line for his post at Chow Cum. Then Alice. Trevor's been threatening to retire ever since you came out here. Well, if he stays as healthy as he is now. What's a long time, Ray? Say. Shall we go? Yeah. Now, where's my pipe? Here he is, hiding under the chair. When did you learn to put things where I can find them? You know, there's only one thing that spoils going away from here, and that's coming back. You'll feel better after a week of char cum. Well, there may be something in that. <laughs> Dear old char cum. Sorry to interrupt you at this time, Doctor. But I'm gravely... What is it now, Trevor? It must be my heart. That pressure, uh, that choking sensation. I say, would you take my pulse? Think you'll live, Doctor? If I were practicing back in London and had a half a dozen patients like him, I'd retire rich. <laughs> uh, well? Yeah, your prescription's in front of you. Drink that. Oh, I am relieved. Uh, gentlemen, to His Majesty the King. The King! This is like a real old-fashioned Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, with the temperature 100 in the shade. If you call this hot, you should have been in my district last week. Why, a blasted fire burned off half my best timber. Oh, that's tough luck, old man. Well, there's one consolation. The beastly tigers won't bother me for a while. Bit thick up there, weren't they? Too thick for comfort. Well, hope they don't want it down our way. Trouble enough without tigers, eh, Granger? Oh, I don't know. A good tiger shoot might liven things up a bit. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. 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 Hello, Tommy. Merry Christmas. 
Oh, Kenneth, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you again. All dressed up like a breath of Mayfair. Oh. Hello, Mary. Hello, John. We're awfully happy you managed to get down for the holidays. Oh, thanks. Why, well, you look lovely tonight. Oh, coming from you, that's more than a compliment. <laughs> Ready for us, my dear? Yes. Gentlemen, St. Nick has just arrived in Burma. <laughs> Gentlemen, I give you St. Nick. Oh, come along. Here's Christmas. something for Tommy Malone. Oh. Merry Christmas, Tommy. <laughs> the same to you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> open it up now. Oh, yes. Why, here we are. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one horse you can't fall off. It's a fitting tribute to your horsemanship, Tommy. <laughs> Mr. John Foster. Oh. Someone from England remembers you, John. Guess who? Well, I, I think I know who it is. <laughs> I think we do, too, don't we, gentlemen? <laughs> Now, is that nice? Place yourself in his shoes. A gift from home. Possibly a very special gift. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about us, Mrs. Trevor? Oh, you're all too anxious. Here, everybody, help yourselves. Boy. In the one horse open sleigh, for the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on top hill ring, making spirits thrive. What fun it is to ride and sing. out here? Well, of course, quite so. Just a figure of speech, my dear. I say, shall we go in? We're going to have another rollicking song. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Nothing like a devoted wife, Foster. I tell you, you want to bring that girl of yours out here. Yes, of course. Uh, excuse me, will you? He seems a bit touchy. Has anything happened? Not yet. Come on, Bungie. Yes, I have. Go pack my bags, quickly. So soon we go home? So soon you go home. I'm going to Mandalay.
Do you do that for everybody? It's part of my work. I'm an entertainer here. I don't know how I can ever thank you. For lighting your cigarette? Oh, for the happiest two days of my life, Alice. The name is Jeannie, and it's been four days. Four days? Will you think of that? You're marvelous. Four days, gone like the bat of an eye. Being up there every day seems like forever. That's an idea. Let's drink to forever. Why not just drink to today? Why not just drink? You know, I'm glad you brought that up. Because uh, all my life I've had to have reasons, the right reasons for, for doing things, even drinking. It's much better like this. Well, isn't it now? Is it? Hmm. You know, the smartest thing I ever did in my whole life was coming down here for this vacation. Why, up there you can go for months without seeing a white man. And a white woman? Years. Jeannie. Jeannie, did you ever lose everything in your life worthwhile? Like that? I never had anything much in my life to lose. Like that. Oh. Let's dance. Well, I'd much rather... I'd much rather dance. All right. Welcome to the Mandalay headquarters of John Foster. Teakwal extraordinary. Entree, mademoiselle. Do you always start the new year with a fight? <laughs> no. No, but you know I like doing it this time. And that reminds me. I came up here to tend to your jaw. Where will I find water and towels? Oh, no, no, I'm all right. Now, don't bother, please. Well, if you're not going to let me help, I guess I'd better... Oh, no, Jenny, Lala, you can't do that. This is New Year's Eve. We, we've got to celebrate. You've been celebrating for four days. If you're going to be in shape to take that boat up the river tomorrow, you'd better sleep it off. Oh, I'm just beginning to have some real fun. I'm not going back yet. What? Mm. No, I like Mandalay. I'm going to stay as long as I please. When people stay too long in Mandalay, they sometimes forget to go back. You're much too fine for that job. Oh, Jeannie. Your vacation's over. Tomorrow you'll be on your way to the jungle. Jungle? Jeannie. Jeannie, do you think you'd like the jungle? Bring it tied up in a pink ribbon when you come back next time. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't bring the jungle to you. But there's nothing to prevent me from bringing you to the jungle, is there? Is there? <sighs> bon voyage, mister. Jeannie. Time you woke up. Look, it's morning. Morning in paradise. <laughs> when that sun starts beating down on you, you'll think it's paradise lost. I don't care. Nothing matters except that here I am and here you are. Good morning, Mr. Forster. Good morning, sir. Skipper. Good morning. I'm in my ship around it. All the years I've been playing in these muddy waters, you're the first honeymoon couple we've ever carried. <laughs> I suppose you'll stay a few days at Charcom so Mrs. Forster can meet some of the ladies. Charcom. When do we get there? At dawn tomorrow. And Salu Landing, you stop there? At four o'clock this afternoon. You get horses there, of course. My wife and I are leaving you at Salu, Captain. See, I've been away too long. Must get back the shortest way possible. We can save a day by not going to Charcom. Anything wrong, John? No, no. You won't mind if we hurry right home, will you? I don't mind hurrying any place with you. Hey, darling, you've got to promise not to be disappointed in your new home. Home? 
<laughs> the sky for your next door neighbor. A castle in the air. Just a castle on stilts. Close to the stars. How is it, Jeannie? The water or the plumbing? I'll get you a bathtub if it'll make you any happier. What? I say I'll get you a bathtub if it'll make you any happier. I couldn't be any happier. You mean that, Jeannie? Isn't there anything I can do? Yes, you can save part of... What? I said you can save part of the water for the tea kettle. Oh. I'll tell Bungie. He'll have breakfast waiting for you. Oh, no. I had one of his breakfasts yesterday. Wait till you see what your wife can do with a can opener. Hello, stranger. Hello, Ken. Hey, you had a nerve running off to Mandalay without taking me along. Well, I made up my mind rather suddenly. Well, things have been happening while you were gone. You remember Malone's fire? Cleaned out his best timber. Yeah, cleaned out his best tigers, too. They've moved over into our district. Tigers would be our luck. So what do you say we drink to it? Uh, we're in for some sport, I tell you. Sport? We're in for trouble. Those natives dread tigers, and you know it. They, they're livestock. Are you getting too old to have any fun? What's a bit of livestock compared to a tiger hunt? suppose I could ever forget you. I say, Jeannie, you're looking awfully fit. Younger than ever. Taking a little vacation, eh? Well, you certainly picked the right time for it. Ranger. This is my wife. Oh. Well, it's splendid. You, you met. Well, congratulations, both of you. Well, now look here, Foster. Uh, there's no reason why we can't drink to this, even if it is the middle of the morning. I'll get the glasses. I bet you caused a sensation in Charcombe. John Foster, bulwark of tradition, kicks over the traces and marries himself a wife. <laughs> they haven't had news like that since the earthquake. We didn't go to Charcombe. Oh, I... I had to get back in a hurry. Oh, naturally. Well, you didn't miss anything. Take a few stuffed shirts, a dash of Mrs. Trevor, mix well, and that's charcoal. One drink and you swear off. I'll try anything once. Here's luck. Sorry to have to dash off. Tiger hunt. Maybe you'll join me. No, thanks. I'll be busy digging tiger pits around the village. Oh, well, that's hardly sporting, is it? Trapping a beast so you can shoot him in the back? may not be sport, but it's common sense. Well, have it your own way. I'll bring you a skin for a rug when I come back again. So long, old man. Bye. Where did you meet Granger? In Mandalay, I suppose. Don't you even remember? There never was anything to remember. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. You just couldn't help saying it, could you? Oh, it's all right. And why you were so anxious to keep away from Chakum needs no explanation now, either. I told you why I had to get back. Oh, yes, you told me, all right. But what you forgot to say was that you were ashamed to introduce me to your friends. Jeannie. Don't worry. Marriage isn't a one-way ticket. Boats go down the river as well as up. And I'm just crazy about boat rides. Jeannie. I can't let you go. I can't. Honeymoons do end, don't they? 
I had hope. Oh, hello. Why, hello, Mary. Jeannie? Well, I see you've met Mrs. Forster. Yes. Mrs. Trevor was out riding, and somehow she lost the trail. But a horse found his way here. Horses are awfully clever, aren't they? Well, uh, yeah, how's Mr. Trevor? Oh, I'm afraid he's quite well. He'll be so interested to learn of your sudden marriage. Although I'm sure I don't know why you couldn't have told us why you left so suddenly for Mandalay. Did you find it interesting there? John made it very interesting. After that, I know you'll be disappointed in Chalcom. Well, I'm sure that Chalcom will be worried about your absence. If you want to get back tonight, we'd better... Oh, of course. I don't like to impose on you, John, but uh, if it wouldn't be too inconvenient... Well, naturally, I'll see you safely home. But we'd better start now. You're sure you don't mind? Why should I? It's been so nice meeting you. Do come again sometime. Thank you. I won't be any longer than I have to, my dear. Don't worry. I'll be perfectly all right. to her finding you here. Yes. Seems that half of Burma has been looking forward to meeting the girl who waited for four years. Oh, you know. What's the matter? Don't I look the part? You look particularly lovely, Jeannie, when you're angry. I'm not angry. You still look particularly lovely. If that's what's on your mind, don't waste your time. Waste my time? You weren't always quite so unfriendly. That friendly girl you knew in Mandalay is gone. And you've got to forget all about her. Do you understand? Lucky Foster. Thanks. Oh, I mean it, Jeannie. Mind if I help myself? Go ahead. How about you? No, thanks. Not in the middle of the day. What? You're not letting the family tradition get you down. Nothing's going to get me down. <laughs> I hope your wife won't mind that I took you away. There really wasn't such a hurry. I don't want your husband to worry about you. Well, he won't worry. Herbert's away on an inspection tour. He won't be home for a week. Must be lonesome for you. Terribly. So you see, it really wasn't very nice of you to hurry me away from your wife. She's charming, John. But somehow, not the girl I pictured you as waiting for so long. Man doesn't always know what he's waiting for until he finds it. Are you sure you found it? Quite sure. In Mandalay. Doesn't matter where she came from or who she is, Mary. She's my wife. The boy, will you see that Mrs. Trevor reaches Chalk come safely? They'll take good care of you. Of course. So sorry to be such an inconvenience. You're not. I'm glad it happened this way. You've helped straighten things out for me. A lot. Bye. You haven't forgotten how to dance. You've helped me to remember. Please. Jeannie. You'd better go. Well, that's not fair. 
You don't know how lonesome a man can get out here for the sight of a woman. I'm not that woman. You're afraid, Jeannie. Afraid of yourself. You're not really in love with him. You couldn't be. Stop it. But don't be a fool, Jeannie. You know the truth. Another girl jilted him. The girl he waited years for. That's why he went to Mandalay to forget. When he married you, he was drunk. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Except that I'm his wife. Mr. Granger just dropped in to say hello. I was sorry to miss Mrs. Trevor. I thought you were taking her back to Charcoal. Yes, I can see that's what you thought. Well, aren't you afraid she might uh, lose her way? You shouldn't have let her go on alone. I had too many things here that couldn't go on alone. Well, uh, it's been nice seeing you again, Jeannie. I hope John brings you over into my neck of the woods one of these days. Granger, I don't want to find you here again. After this, you'll do me the favor of staying away. <laughs> Why, you don't think that I... I don't want to find you here again. Well, you're not very trusting, are you? Get out. Sahib, Sahib. Well? Tiger kill man. Tiger, where? River by village. Killer, all right. Over there. Take a look at that. Poor devil. Front paw broken. That accounts for it. Humans are easier prey. This must be the one I wounded the other day. Now we're in for it. Once they've tasted human flesh. Oh, don't worry, I'll get him. Great sport wounding that tiger, wasn't it, Granger? I hate to think of the effect this will have. Hear that? It's the warning, all right. Once the native hears those drums, we won't get any work out of them at all. Now we're in for trouble. We've got to stop those drums. Come on. Oh, it's you. I hope you're not disappointed. I thought it was John. What brings you here? That tiger. I've been trailing him for the last two nights. Haven't you heard him? I tell you, he leads a charmed life. You can't kill him. <laughs> I have a 
beginning to believe that infernal native superstition. Can't you think of something more cheerful? Oh, sorry. But the only something more cheerful I know of right now comes in bottles. Mine? I guess you need it. Where's Foster? Down at the village. Oh. Not very wise of him, is it? Leaving you alone like this? The natives are sick. They need him. Don't you? I'm not afraid. I'm perfectly safe here. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, don't worry, Jeannie. I'll be around. You can't stay here. Oh, I'm about done in. I'm dead on my feet. Haven't you caused me enough trouble? Oh, so he's been taking it out on you. Well, if he doesn't trust you any more than that, why should you care? Will you please go? the girl I knew in Mandalay. I don't believe I've ever known you before. And I, I'm rather glad to find that out. Now, can we be friends? I hope so. A few minutes ago, I told you not to worry. I met a genie. The door locks on the inside. I know you'll feel better about it. That way. every hour. My two children, why Sahib? Please save. Gautang, get the tribe ready for a trek. I'm taking you all to Chakum. All go to Chakum? Head to doctors and fresh water before it's too late. Sahib, wise man. Let's get them ready. Ox cross for the old women and children. Now hurry. Bring my horse, Banji. I'll have to get Granger to help me. Yes, sir. Granger. Granger! Oh, Granger! Oswald! Oswald, where's your master? Sahib, not home. What? Not home all night, Sahib. Not home all night? John, what a scare you gave me. Close shave, Foster. John, what's the matter? Front paw broken, all right. Maybe there's something to their superstition. Ironic, isn't it, that I should have to thank you for saving my life? I want to take yours. John! You're not worth it. Either of you. You can't think. Tell him. 
I tracked that tiger here last night. When I found the genie was alone, I knew it wasn't safe. I can see that. I should have known that while I was away, he wouldn't object to being alone with an old friend. Well, that's what you think. Now, wait a minute, Foster. Never mind. You have thought it all along, but I wasn't good enough for you. Ever since we left Mandalay, it's been getting under your skin. You were ashamed of me. Well, I'm ashamed of myself for putting up with it so long, trying to be a wife to you, trying to make up for someone else, someone who threw you down. Well, you've twisted the truth for the last time, and now you can think anything you like. But you'll never have another chance to throw it up to me because I've had enough. I'm through and I'm walking out on you right now. Well, you asked for it. Never mind about me. You're taking orders now, Granger. If we don't get our natives out of here, this epidemic will wipe out the whole tribe. I'll stay with those who can't be moved. You're taking the others to Charkum. That suits me, Foster. That suits me fine. When I get there, I'm not coming back. Oh, and by the way, I'm taking Jeannie with me. Poor devil. Sahib, you say my people go to Chakrom. White friend, save us. Yes, confound it. Granger should have been here before this. Take this man out. John. Oh, thank heavens. I was afraid you were... What do you want? Ron, you said you were very ill. I hoped I'd be able to help you. Do you really want me to think that? What difference does it make what you or I think now? No. John, you've got to help Granger. He's fallen into one of the tiger pits. <laughs> so he's the one you're really worried about. He's facing death. He's broken his arm. He's helpless. You've got to help him. And he thought pits weren't sporting. track tigers anymore. Now he can wait for them. You mean you don't want to go to him? You're going to leave him there? Oh, that frightens you, does it? You're trembling, trembling for him. You're ill, John. You're not well. If you were, you couldn't say these things. We've got to hurry. His life depends on you. I'm not asking for myself, not asking for him. Don't you see that if you left him there, you'd hate yourself? <laughs> yes, for not seeing through both of you from the start. Listen, after our marriage, I thought a new life had started for me. I tried to change all my ideas to meet it. Please, John. It wasn't easy at first. Leeling and I, I couldn't introduce you to my friends. Well, you can't change a man overnight. But I, I fought that all out till I was ready to face the whole world with you. But you hadn't changed. And all the time, Granger was there, waiting for you. And now you were going with him. No matter what you think of me, you mustn't hold it against him. I never meant those things I said. You made me say them. You've got to believe in me, John. Granger means nothing to me. No more to you than all the others, eh? Get him out for you. That devil tiger will never frighten them again. John, please listen. John! John! Come in. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Mrs. Foster, me and my ship deem it an honor to have you once more as our guest. Thanks. I suppose this is a vacation for you. I've had my vacation. Oh, yes, to be sure. Uh, your, your quarters are quite all right, Mr. Granger? No, oh, quite, thank you. Yes. You know, by walking out on Foster, you furnished Charcom with enough conversation to last them five years. I thought you wanted to forget Charcom. Right. And I'm going to help you to forget. I'm going to make up to you for everything that's happened to both of us. Seems to me I've heard all that before. No, 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 Jeannie. I mean it. I'll show you. John showed me. You couldn't forget. You couldn't forget any more than John could. Oh, no. You'll soon see how wrong you are. Dr. Collins recommended a boat trip. Nothing like a boat trip, you know, after a fever. But you're not well enough to be on your feet. The doctor said... Chuck the doctor. I'm afraid you're a little late, Foster. Ginny, I can't let you go like this. I thought perhaps if I could make you understand... understand how I really feel, how I've felt all along. She understands. You had your chance and you didn't come through. Now I'm ready to give her everything she wants. On any terms she wants, if she'll have me. Ginny, you've got to listen to me. Ginny. Stand there. Get Dr. Collins. He's ill. But the boat sails in five minutes. He can't go anywhere like this. Tell the captain to hold the boat. They shouldn't have let you leave the hospital. But, Janie, listen, up there in the jungle, I must have been daffy. I said and did so many things I didn't really mean. Perhaps we both did, John. But I've had time to think. To think what a fool I've been. Oh, uh, Captain. Yes, sir. I'm not sailing with you. You send my bags ashore. Aye, aye, sir. Let's go back to England, Jeannie. I want my people to... to meet my number one girl. You've got to believe me. I want to, John. I want to. Then you won't go away. You won't leave me? Not for all the teak wood in Burma. <laughs> 